Hello again. It's some time since I last did a video about shooting sports, so today I'm going to try and do one for those of you who cast your own bullets. This is the lead pot I use. It's electric and it's made by Lee Precision in the United States. And like most Lee products, it's very good value for money, but can stand a few improvements. The main problem I find with it is the temperature control. The temperature is controlled by this knob here, graduated 0 to 10 or low to high. But what I find is that the temperature of the lead increases as the level of the lead decreases in the pot. So while you might start off at 700 degrees, a nice casting temperature, once the level begins to drop in the pot, temperature goes up and you find yourself casting at maybe around a thousand degrees. So what I'm trying to do is convert this simple control system to PID control. Now if you look up PID on Wikipedia, it'll tell you that it stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. Basically what that means is that the amount of power supplied to the heating element here is dependent on the difference between the actual temperature and the desired temperature. It's a lot more complicated than that, but that's really all we need to know for now. OK, let's have a look at the components we're going to need to make our control system. It wasn't very long ago that a PID controller was as large as a shoebox and cost several hundred pounds, but, but these days they've been miniaturised and uh, become considerably cheaper. In fact, you can buy them now for less than £10. So the first thing we need is something to sense the temperature of the molten lead. This is called a K-type thermocouple. It's enclosed in uh, stainless steel housing. And I'm going to mount that inside the lead pot so it's in direct contact with the molten lead. The output from the thermocouple goes to this PID controller, which you can see is rather small and compact. You can buy these for less than £10 on eBay. A word of caution if you buy one direct from China, you might find that uh, the instructions you get are either in Chinese or very poor English translation. And these things are not particularly easy to, to set up. So I bought this one from a company in America. It's still made in China, but it's retailed through the American branch. And the advantage of that is you get four pages of instructions, setting up instructions with it. So there's no problem setting up the thing. The output of this goes to the heating coil, but it can't really go directly because this will only handle about three amps maximum. This is a 700 watt heating coil, 240 volts, so it's about 3 amps when it's working, but the inrush current when it turns on from cold is going to be more than that. So what I'm going to do is put a solid state relay between the controller and the heating coil. This one is a 10 amp one, which will be okay in the UK. If you live in North America with a 200, uh, 110 volt supply, you'll probably need a heavier relay, probably a 25 amp one. Again, these are, can be got from eBay quite cheaply. I'm going to mount all these components in some sort of um, container. And because I'm not the tidiest of individuals, I'm going to put them in this metal box. That way, if it gets splashed with molten lead or got a hammer dropped on it, it won't be a complete disaster. So the first thing we need to do is have a look inside this gadget to see what we need to do to the wiring to connect our PID controller to it. So here are the internals exposed for all to see. The controller is a very simple bimetallic thermostat. It's surprising that it works as well as it does considering where it's positioned. 
Anyway, all we need to do to bypass it to fit our controller is to take the live lead from here, unclip it and put it directly onto the input to the heating coil. We can leave the neutral here and the earth leads alone. So now I have to cut some holes in the case for the mounted components and also make a mounting bracket for the thermostat. So if I were you I'd go off and look at something more interesting and uh, I'll get back to you later. Oh, welcome back. I've finished cutting the holes in my case now. Got holes in the front for the controller and the on-off switch and on the back for the in and out cable glands and the entry for the thermocouple. If you're interested in the sort of tooling you can use to do this sort of thing, here's some of the stuff that I've used. This is a handy device. It's an abrasive saw blade, very thin fits in a standard hacksaw frame and the advantage of this is it will cut in any direction so you can actually saw out a square hole almost in one go. This is uh, called a step drill as you can see it's got step cutters and it will cut a hole from 8mm at this end to 38mm up here so you can just keep drilling until you've got the hole size that you require. This is called a power file, uses thin abrasive belts, uh, it's very quick to use, um, sometimes a little bit too quick and you get carried away with it. And finally for the traditionalist there's a file, very good for finishing off. Okay, I have all the components mounted in the box and wired together. At the moment I've just switched it on for the first time and I'm just checking out the transducer. Uh, the way I'm doing that is just immersing it in some water which I'm bringing to the boil. Ok the water's boiling so let's see what we've got on the display. Mm. 216 should be 212 degrees F that's 4 degrees out not bad for a £2.99 transducer though and you can enter an offset into the program to take care of that now it's all wired up ready for test um, I forgot to mention that I've made this removable clamp for the transducer so I can uh, get the thing out of the lead pot if I need to for cleaning and so on. Well, I'm going to switch it on and set it up for auto tuning. At the moment it's displaying the current temperature, a bit cold in here this morning, 41 degrees C. Uh, this flashing light here means that it's on the auto tuning cycle and what it will do, it will heat up to the set point, overshoot and then cool down again and it will do that at least three times and when it's done that it can work out the best control strategy for this particular application so really the user doesn't have to do anything except press a few buttons. It's starting to approach the set point which is uh, set to 750 Fahrenheit 
because this is the first uh, attempt at um, auto tuning I expect it's going to overshoot considerably because it doesn't turn off until it reaches the set point It's reached 770 and the relay has now turned off so it will go into its cooling cycle. If you're an experienced bullet caster you may be thinking that 750 is too hot for casting. Well I use pure lead for my muzzle loading bullets and I find that although lead melts at about 650 and can be used at 700 it doesn't really flow too well at 700 and I find that with aluminium moulds in particular temperature of 750 is much more usable. Of course if you use alloy bullets, if you add tin to your lead then it makes it flow much more easily and typically I would cast at 700F. on its second cycle now the relay turned back on at 725 so we'll see how much it overshoots this time okay the relay's turned off again so it looks like it's overshooting by about nine degrees On the third cycle it turned back on at um, about 7.20. It's now applying power more slowly as it reaches the final temperature. Uh, it's still auto tuning, it's on the fourth cycle and it's now hunting about plus or minus one degrees around the set point. Here's the reading on my trusty lime and lead thermometer. Pretty accurate, but of course it doesn't have any control facilities. It's now stable to plus or minus one degree. The whole process has taken uh, about an hour. So now I think I'll put the lid on it and mount it up properly. Alright, I've put it in position and turned off the auto tune. Uh, this is the rate at which it normally heats up. You can see from the blinking light that the relay is beginning to go on to pulsed mode instead of continuously on.